in the first exp first explanation they they explained with the uh, they they are explained with the, the band this uh, full uh, full restriction site restriction fragment having two proteins that uh, two protein uh, the normal uh, gene without mutation that having the two uh, alu1 alu1 two uh, restriction sites that uh, active are uh, the restriction site for alu1 enzyme okay in the experiment they are remove that particular restriction fragment so uh, after that the, after the experimental uh, deduction there is only one alu it's a restriction fragment deduction deletion in the in the deletion normal protein normal gene they have a two restriction sites for alu1 uh, they are mutated so there is no there is only one alu uh, restriction site that is happen at the restriction fragment that at the particular portion uh, so the pro that after that uh, mutation there was a modified protein detected in the uh, sample another one type is nucleotide removal type the nucleotide uh, particular portion is totally removed from the restriction site so that is another one uh, this ha in this step they have you they explained with the e core one after the uh, 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 after the restriction uh, there was after they are divided into two portion right uh, every restriction enzymes divide uh, cut the gene so there was a two different uh, portions that two different uh, portions are formed uh, uh, with the formed with the, uh, another gene with ligase enzyme that is newly formed gene called as the small uh, is a mutated one there was some mutation happen at the restriction site of ecor1 so two types in the mutagenesis that is restriction fragment deletion another one is nucleotide removal restriction Another uh, important thing is site directed mutagenesis, the advanced techniques of mutagenesis. In this uh, mutagenesis, we may substitute the gene, we may detect, uh, delete the gene. Uh, uh, another thing is uh, we can insert the gene. Insert means here, uh, substitute means remove and add. Remove the one gene at a particular site and add the new gene. Uh, here, insertion means. Uh, with the normal, with the native uh, gene, we need to add the extra uh, characters. That is called, called as insertion. Here, uh, they having the di three different steps. First, add, after the uh, this uh, mutation, ha mutation experiment, we want to amplify. Uh, with a small quantity, we are not able to do the experiment, and we are not uh, that is not uh, uh, accept not usable for the future uh, publication. So we want to get more for the for get more amount of uh, um, uh, mutated mut uh, mutated uh, fragment. We are doing amplification PCR amplification. For that, they are doing the hot star um, hot star PCR. In the hot star PCR. Uh, after the hot star PCR, they are receiving the, uh, the higher quantity of the gene. Then uh, that treatment and enrichment kinase, ligase, and TNT, uh, TN, uh, 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 that, uh, DNA polymerase enzymes, because after that, uh, that uh, mixture is phosphorylated with the uh, uh, Phosphorylation happens in the uh, uh, multiplied sequence. Then that is ligated with the plas, the ligated each other. After the ligation, that uh, template want to develop for a uh, full uh, full uh, genomic DNA formation. That that uh, this four this four steps are happen in the. Uh, uh, in, in the second after in the second step after the amplification of site directed muta, mu, site direct mutagenesis happened DNA. So on uh, sequential experiment, 
uh, just to understand the concept for laboratory level if you want to insert uh, for example uh, if the plant is grow uh, you want, uh, want to we want to grow a plant in a fast manner uh, uh, we want to take the gene from the fast grown fast grow uh, growth having plant and insert into the uh, slow slowly growing plant that after that uh, that the, the further process we can do the uh, mutagenesis uh, and uh, amplification and enrichment enrichment is the uh, it's uh, improve the ability and for its uh, concluded form okay next is the uh, uh, it's one type of technique uh, is, uh, widely used in the uh, genetic advanced genetic engineering labs advanced molecular biology lab they mentioned so some of someone specifically asked this uh, portion explain the uh, uh, what is gene knockout what gene splicing what is gene knockout means it's come it's uh, uh, typically removed that gene expression fully removed the gene expression there was no uh, traces are there okay uh, it takes much time Another thing that DNA slice silencing means uh, we are not removing the gene. We are silent. We are suppress the expression. We are uh, uh, we can um, uh, we can uh, we can uh, reduce the expression of the gene or masking the the gene expression with the uh, addition of anti nucleic acid analog. Okay, it's a uh, expensive method. Uh, for uh, some of the advanced genetic in laboratories, molecular biology laboratories, they are doing the gene knockout in a laboratory scale and they are applied for the many medicinal purposes. So gene knockout is fully uh, deletion of uh, removal of the gene expression. But see, the silencing means it's a, uh, by addition of the synthetic antisense nucleotide in the uh, gene, we can uh, silence, we can reduce the uh, expression of particular gene. Okay, next is the, another one example. Here the gene uh, gene knockout happened in the animal. Uh, in the in the one mice, they uh, it shown the fully black color. So only one one place having the white color. While injecting the recombinant uh, that uh, that uh, cells into the uh, this mice, we can get the uh, this uh, chimeric mice. Chimeric mice having the uh, both the recombinant character and the native character. That is the gene knockout. Only only one expression completely stopped. So here, uh, some some character is uh, uh, blocked. Only the colors alone expressed. Okay. After that, uh, one other one topic is the post translation modification. Okay. Post translation modification. Why it is important means every genome having the transcription process that trans after the transcription process that receives the mRNA. That received mRNA is undergone the translation process to produce the protein. Formed proteins are, are uh, undergone various chemical reactions, phosphorylation, acetylation, methylation, uh, various chemical reactions, chemical uh, uh, chemical natural chemical experiments happen in the human body. Due to this uh, chemical process that are modified in itself, one protein can modify into uh, thousands of proteins. That is the post translation modification. After the translation, it's undergone the methylation, acetylation, that kind of uh, chemical reactions. It chemi this chemical reactions uh, change the structure, uh, produce the structure and change the function and uh, structural change, structural and functional change on the protein X uh, explained with the post translation modification. How we can understand, how we can analysis. In this post-translation modification understanding, we are having the different uh, steps that are explained with the 
biological uh, sequential experiments okay this workflow is very very important why i am uh, after the long search i i got this image because i am not uh, expect this image i i am searched for the uh, what is the protein uh, post translation protein modification that is kind of the search i do i did in the uh, my laptop after there some period i am recognize this uh, flow chart it's a one very very important flow chart which helps you to understand what are the methods in uh, molecular biology first is a sample collection then is a sample preparation here uh, this, in this sample preparation you can uh, do the cell deception protein solubilization protein deplet depletion enrichment removal of substance these are all the basic experiments uh, which uh, helps to and improve the your research quality improve your um, results then protein now we have you have the protein mixture someone asked the question the two days back uh, how to separate the protein uh, in the rna and dna and rna are genetic materials uh, that are that each and every every rna isolation we have different method protein isolation we have different method likewise uh, we, we can obtain the protein mixture then go for the various experiment okay first uh, experiment that is a bottom up approach first we want to do the sts stage after the sts stage we want to do the proteolysis process uh, after this proteolysis process helps to obtain the protein sample crude protein uh, that purified protein sample then we want to do the reverse phase phase hplc column this reverse phase phase hplc uh, experiment is a very important thing for understanding the protein stack protein character okay what whether it is uh, how uh, what is the molecular weight uh, that kind of things we can understand then maltitoff it helps to understand the structure of protein maltitoff is helps to understand structure of the protein these are all the techniques helps to uh, do your post translation modification okay how to understand the post translation modification with hplc first uh, every uh, proteins having the unique character that unique character explained with uh, the peak value that uh, okay this protein having the peak at uh, this point that is the explained one but if there is a change in uh, structure we are uh, get the peak at various uh, nanometers uh, that one of the one way another way is uh, molecular weight change that uh, in the sts page itself we can understand whether it is uh, modified or not mm. okay these are the things which uh, helps to do the post trans protein analysis protein analysis for understanding the peptide uh, that uh, um, understanding the protein character uh, protein uh, molecular weight and for that structure that uh, character molecular size weight means we want to do the rp reverse phase hplc that is rp hplc another thing is the structure understanding we want to do esi or molditoff Okay. Uh, in this, uh, after the ex in each and every step, uh, we want to do the. Uh, it's these are the some uh, important things. That is the lipid estimation, carbohydrate estimation. That is the uh, one thing for lip. Uh, every cells having the lipid and carbohydrate, right? Uh, in the once you destroy the cell, uh, the internal portion having the. Uh, are uh, uh, that extracellular membrane having the polysaccharide and in uh, that polysaccharide uh, can be uh, hydrolyzed by buffers and the enzymes after the hydrolysis you can get the carbohydrates another thing is the cell membrane also having the lipids how to separate it if you are destroying the cells with the water molecule means that polysaccharides are soluble soluble in the water so uh unsoluble that uh, insoluble molecules are called as the lipids lipids and cell debris after the next step we can obtain the 
lipids. Okay, first step is the biological materials collection, then doing the extraction. Here they are, uh, did the extraction with the organic material uh, that uh, solvents or that uh, these are all the highly uh, the methanol is a midpolar compound. The polarity is polarity index is 4.5 something 5.1. Then uh, these are all help to separate the lipids. Then for confirmation we can do the LCMS. After the LCMS analysis, uh, these are all the techniques for the separation. Uh, once they inject into the uh, lipids into uh, reverse uh, the uh, reverse phase liquid chromatography, we can obtain these unseparated. So we can uh, separate the lipid various kind of lipids. Then ionization process uh, and deduction deduction by the uh, various uh, molded of excrements. Uh, this is another workflow of uh, the separation of lipid. Uh, here, this is one of the experiment for estimating the carbohydrate widely used experiment. Another technique is here they are using the uh, that uh, glucose oxidase uh, peroxidase uh, reagent. But uh, some of the experiment they are using the uh, DNS assay. So, the phenol sulfuric acid assay. This, uh, why I am mentioned this means uh, they are having the question like that. Okay, if you are, uh, they are given like given paragraph uh, for the carbohydrate extraction. Uh, finally, they are asked the question with how 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 do you ident understand uh, how do you identify the quantifying the carbohydrate? That kind of question they asked in the question asked in the CSR examination. So I mentioned this. Yeah, you can we can uh, quantify the carbohydrate with the DNS assay, phenol sulfuric acid assay. Uh, that that are directly uh, and indirectly help us to uh, quantifying the uh, carbohydrate. Here one other method is a co uh, the GOPOD uh, reagent. First we want to uh, take the starch, starch that is the polysaccharide. Then the starch solution is digested with alpha amylase. That alpha amylase convert the uh, monosaccharides, disaccharides. The disaccharides are converted into the monosaccharides by the glucoamylase. This monosaccharides are quantified by the GOPVOD reagent. Okay, next we are entering the our today topic is the immunology techniques. In this immunology technique, we first we want to understand the antigen antibody. First, we previously we discussed in uh, immunology part. One time I'm going to I uh, just just a refreshment uh, antigen what which is a foreign particle it may be uh, the signal for are the human cell surface receptor or antigens the anti uh, antibodies the antibodies are present in our human cell the self defense system that are recognizing once they are re recognizing the foreign particle it's activated uh, it's a basic concept. In this antibody generation experiment, they are producing the antibody in laboratory scale itself. So, uh, what? How can we express? How can we uh, produce the antibody? Okay, this each and uh, each of uh, B cells are only produce the antibodies uh, to one epitope. Epitope means it's an antigen. Okay. Uh, here, the first image itself, they mentioned the large immuno antigen, immunogen field, multiple epitope, polyclonal antibody. The polyclonal antibody means that antibody having that antibody, antibody the one one protein blocked it interact with the n number of the uh, anti anti uh, n number of antibodies that are polyclonal antibodies. The small peptide of peptide immunogen yield. Fewer restricted restricted epitope polyclonal. Here, it's only one. This particular portion is uh, uh, this interaction portion is removed, and it uh, indicated by the that also bound with the another antibody. Then isolate the isolate and fuse the B cells to the hybridoma cell. Here uh, we obtained one new kind of the anti. In antibody interaction, we want to insert the into one uh, hybridoma cell lines. That hybridoma cell line produces the monoclonal antibody. This is the uh, laboratory scale experiment. First, we want to inject the antigen. 
that once entering the foreign particle in animal that the immune system is uh, uh, activated that is a b cell activation so that b cell uh, that b cells are isolated from the animal antibody forming cells that are the b cells that are that cells are fusion fused with the hybridoma cell hybridoma cell is the empty cell without nucleus that can be multi growth um, that can be grown in uh, multiple uh, count that is uh, that uh, empty cell that hybridoma cells uh, uh, fused with the hybridoma cells it's a very important step in monoclonal antibody production first inject the antigen into the animal that antigen immune system get alert that producing that b cells are isolated and b cells are uh, in, uh, fused with the uh, nucleus free cell so this uh, hybridoma cell is formed after the hybridoma cell formation that is uh, producing antibody and uh, it uh, cloned uh, that produced uh, that cells also divided in a larger uh, number so the so there is a no n number of uh, antibody production happen in the medium then we can isolate the monoclonal antibodies these are all the steps involved in the hybridoma technology uh, it's a uh, one another technique happen in the uh, in the uh, rabbit once uh, inject antigen in the rabbit then antigen uh, b cells are uh, recognized the antigen and b cells can uh, develop the ability to tar facing the antigen so that are producing the memory cells memory cells means okay uh, this antigen having the uh, this uh, this active sites once it's enter into the body we can modify we can uh, block this uh, antigen with the antibody this is the basic concept uh, the memory cells means uh, it's for the future purpose once they have uh, once the b cell it get affected by the antigen that uh, b cell are pro producing the uh, receptor for uh, the blocking inhibitor for antigen so uh, in this step the b cell recognized okay this uh, antigen having the triangle shape uh, uh, blocking side now if we design the weapon to uh, the antibody to block this means we can control the infection so that memory cells are get alert and uh, store the memory for the future purpose so only here you can see this uh, b cells having the uh, triangle shape uh, receptor receivers okay uh, after the experiment we can collect all kind of the monoclonal antibodies secretion of the antibodies then uh, inject again into the uh, that uh, human uh, cell this is a, this is the kind of uh, it's a one basic experiment which uh, uh, explain the plasma therapy the plasma cells having the b cells that b cells are uh, uh, having the antibodies against uh, the viral infection this uh, viral uh, so the plasmas are injected into the another patient it will helps to cure the uh, develop the immune system in the patients uh next immunological first immunology technique uh, dis we, we discussed is the uh, antibody monoclonal antibody production why we want to uh, uh, produce the monoclonal antibody we can apply for the medical purpose medical therapeutics and the diagnosis purpose the, uh, the first time I explained the rabbit experiment it's a therapeutic application once we want to develop a memory that memory helps to block the uh, future infection that is the therapeutic or it may be help us to treat another patients in the experiment we are going to explain the monoclonal antibodies with the deduction diagnosis methods diagnosis methods okay first it's an uh it's an uh, sandwich lsl experimental method so it's a direct uh interaction in this image they explain how the antibody get interact with the antigen first step is uh, antibody placed in the medium okay how they produce this antibody same as uh, explained in the previous slide they are produced the monoclonal uh, they produced the uh, artificially they are producing the mono mono antibody 
that antibody is uh, uh, coated on the surface once uh, we are adding the test sample the test sample is the antigen it bound with the uh, it, if that having the specific site for the interaction uh, that bound at the pro that antibody then after the section we want to uh, after the bound antigen antibody interaction we want to understand the uh, bo that bonding with the enzyme linked detection antibody that is the another antibody secondary antibody is added on the uh, antigen that having the enzyme link this enzyme having the once after the bounding of the anti the enzyme linked antibody on the antigen uh, that ha that uh, is in inactivated form once adding the substrate to the enzyme that will get um, uh, that expressed in a uh, ODA value otherwise uh, without the uh, this uh, if there is a no antigen interaction there is no enzyme linked antibody binding so there is the no enzyme activation so there is no color it's an experimental output comparison once that uh, experiment your sample having antigen that producing that activating the enzyme substrate activity that enzyme substrate uh, can, can enzyme substrate activity helps to produce the uh, color or intensity that uh, OD value otherwise it not produce the there is no uh, bonding happen in the uh, top portion so there is no enzyme conversion so there is no OD value color change value here we have a different type one is the direct method antigens are present in a sample we want to add the uh, enzyme linked antibody this antibody gives a uh, color uh, once uh, after the after the binding we want to do the wash other antigens are removed from the sample once uh, if there is a interaction with the uh, monoclonal uh, that antibody and antigen uh, there was an enzyme that enzyme is activated with the substrate that uh, gives a color each and every step we want washing is the very important thing in the uh, direct uh, uh, in the sandwich elisa here uh, first the, the direct elisa the antigen sample addition then add the antibody then add the substrate it's all no need to do the washing but sandwich elisa this washing is important step uh, first primarily that uh, sample uh, kit is coated with the antibody the antibody then we want to add the sample here uh, for please uh, understand uh, first step we want to add the uh, the coated the kit that uh, store that plate with the antibody then only we want to add the sample if there is any uh, recognizable antigen in the sample that bound with the uh, placed antibody that is orange color after this and after that binding uh, we want to add the primary antibody that uh, uh, addition of the uh, uh, another another uh, uh, secondary antibody the secondary antibody help us to understand uh, are recognizing the antigen only specific for the antigen if there is an antigen it bound at the particular portion after that we want to do the wash if there is uh, interaction happen means that antigen antibody uh, and uh, the enzyme linked antibody was there that produce the act uh, that uh, gives the expression for the substrate so only that uh, final yellow color happen then competitive another one is a competitive first one is uh, addition of the antibody then the second step we are adding the antigen and antibody the uh, are both in the same uh, step if there is uh, uh, antibody antibody interaction happen in the uh, sample okay that uh, sample having the immunity effect immune effect this is happen in a uh, or uh, rapid test okay uh, that uh, they are load they are uh, they are coated the uh, kit with uh, this uh, uh, that antibody that our human sample having the IgM or IgG means that is interact with the uh, base antibody that producing the enzyme activity.
that uh, that color change first one is uh, one second repeat first one is the sample addition then only add the monoclonal antibody uh, then uh, that, then only add the detection antibody the antibody then sandwich elisa in this sandwich elisa first step is uh, we are coated with the antibody then only add the antigen another step is a competitive inhibitor in this competitive inhibitor we are having the uh, antibody on the coated plate and then add the sample that is sample having the immune response against the antigen that is recognized by the uh, placed antibody this uh, producing the expression this are all the uh, anisa method which is going to detect the uh, disease, that is the detection diagnosis the purpose another one so here i am once i am explain, explain with the competitive because uh, uh, it's a image which helps to understand okay first is a sample uh, addition to the monoclonal here that's uh, they have mentioned the this red color uh, is a placed antigen okay okay then add the antibodies with the uh, enzyme that if there is an interaction happens that enzyme activity and maybe the antigen and the antibody okay next is a radio immuno assay radio immuno assay it's a radioactive labeled they first previously they mentioned the enzyme linked right here we are uh, going to explain about the uh, fluorescence molecule labeled uh, the enzyme labeling and fluorescence molecule labeling is a very very important thing in uh, uh, in, uh, they, the addition of the radio reactive molecules in the uh, experiment is very careful we want to make, uh, we want to carefully handling the radioactive molecules here they understand the interaction so understand they are uh, explain the output with the radioactive molecule first for that we need antigen antibody and radioactive label against the antigen against the antigen means it's a favor to antibody here the one important thing in the radio immuno need to uh, do the uh, antigen antibody we need antigen antibody on a radioactive label this radioactive label want to against uh, the against to the antigen that means it's a favor of antibody okay uh, it have a structure right here they are at the in mixture and give some time to reaction after the reaction we we are remove the uh, excess molecule separate separate the molecule uh, then collect the uh, bounded molecule based on their uh, that in the density variation once it's very uh, it's a small it's a um, antibody alone means it's shown some molecular weight uh, it's bound with the radioactive molecule and antigen means it's gives some uh, molecular weight it's a vary between the native and the uh, bound compound here after the bound fraction collection we are uh, explain the we are uh, um, we are understand the uh, uh, immuno immuno assay with color change here it's a principle here it's uh, uh, using uh, the antigen antibody binding uh, it's uh, uh, based on the antigen antibody binding we can uh, understand the quantifying the uh, the amount of antigen antibody interaction based on the and this antigen antibody interaction is identified using the radioactivity the process first radioactive agent first uh, first antibody it's a first, first primary antibody then uh, antigen added to the sample here it happened right antigen antibody interaction happen in the uh, cells some so that is the also the, the antibody is primary antibody is loaded with the radioactive antigen during this reaction this uh, radioactive reagent replaced with the antibody sorry antigen uh, so this radioactive compounds are free that freely available on the uh, 
for example then that uh, uh, antigens are bound at the at antibody here uh, it's an explanation then adding by adding the secondary antibody that uh, primary antibodies are loaded on the secondary antibody this uh, secondary after this secondary antibody addition give some reaction the time for reaction after that based on the color intensity we can explain the how much amount of antigen present on the uh, present in the uh, sample uh, they have a standard value uh, they, because they know how much amount of primary antibody they added for how this much of primary antibody they, they want to produce this much of color but after the addition of antigen there was replacement happen in the uh, sample this replacement reduce the uh, intensity color of the uh, radioactive antigen so in this sec after the addition secondary antibody addition there was some small amount of uh, uh, changes that uh, replacement happen right uh, in the uh, primary antibody it's expressed as a uh, color intensity variation okay next uh, this radioactive apart from the that is one kind of the radioactivity method another one is the uh, western blotting in this western blotting we have the uh, sequential step first we want to do the electrophoresis with the gel then we want to do the membrane transfer in this membrane transfer in uh, uh, in between the gel want to be placed in the between the bit, between region uh, that membranes are placed over the in top and bottom of the gel is uh, uh, that bottom top of the gel is placed with the membrane then we want to place the sponge why it, we want to uh, do this means we want to transfer the dna the transfer the proteins in the uh, that proteins means antigen antibody molecules okay uh, transfer the proteins that is the antigen um, transfer the protein from the gel to the membrane so this this setup is help us to uh, do the transfer process then blocking blocking means uh, that we want to avoid the movement of uh, protein in the uh, membrane so we are doing the blocking with uh, uh, primary antibody incubation after the primary antibody incubation the, uh, we, we, we are uh, uh, if there is a specific interaction happen in the membrane uh, that antibodies are uh, placed over the membrane uh, then secondary antibodies uh, added specific for the primary antibody uh, if that there is uh, interaction happen means that gives the a band in the uh, image that membrane color change that is the membrane we can ex uh, we, we can understand the uh, uh, understand the binding, understand the uh, protein antigen interaction, antigen antibody interaction through the best membrane, western blotting membrane. So, here the in the western blotting method, the membrane is a very, very important thing uh, which helps with the, each and every step. Uh, we want to uh, and, uh, carefully handle the membrane because this membrane carries the protein. Once again, I'm repeat with another image. Uh, it's a uh, gel that has proteins are separated, that antigens are separated. Then we want to do the uh, plotting, uh, we want to do the protein transfer to nitrocellulose membrane. This nitros ha ha having the, uh, once first place the gel uh, and then place uh, membrane over the gel, then place the uh, sponge. It's a setup. Uh, here they mentioned right uh, they make uh, some uh, impression that impression uh, and they are adding uh, in this blotting uh, this protein transfer that uh, the dna is uh, directly transferred to the membrane nitrocellulose membrane so after the tra transfer that membrane is transferred into this immuno blotting instrument this is the western blotting instrument it looks like a, a bottle in this bottle, we want to place the um, that membrane. It's a rolling bottom, rolling bottle. In the experiment, it's uh, gives it's rapidly rolled, rolled in the uh, instrument. 
after in this step uh, we have the antigen in this step itself uh, we are added the first step they are added the primary antibody after that doing the risk, doing the uh, washing then second antibody addition then deduction it's a final deduction the auto radiography the deduction this uh, develops the uh, this auto radiography is uh, understood by the band with band appear on the membrane if there is uh, interaction happen means it gives some color uh, that oh, sometimes it may be the uh, blue color uh, it may be the red color it depends on the uh, antigen antibody interaction uh, that second antibody activity then immunoprecipitation in this immunoprecipitation we can understand the uh, immunoprecipitation uh, with the antigen antibody once the sample having the antigen uh, that the antigen is interacted with the antibody that antibody then uh, uh, by addition of the substrate on the uh, uh, or a binding molecule for the antibody that uh, due to the molecular weight uh, higher molecular weight it settle down on the uh, in the settle down in the uh, cell in the solution after that certification we can obtain the uh, the precipitator molecule it's an another strategy in the immunoprecipitation uh, the recombinant cells having the uh, different antibodies on the cell surface that are, we are collected the antibody uh, then uh, incubated with the uh, uh, that uh, uh, that antibody antigen if there is a specific antibody for, for the antigen means that gives the interaction then in, after the interaction we want to do the uh, sts page this is the sts page uh, uh, cells uh, banding it's explained the whether it is having the uh, antigen antibody interaction okay next uh, uh, one thing we discussed uh, the diagnosis method, therapeutic method diagnosis method then immunoprecipitation and the immuno uh, immuno assays related analysis or techniques now we are enter into the advanced techniques in the immunology that is the flow cytometry this flow cytometry is the very very uh, uh, important one in the today's uh, level, today's uh, experiment today's uh, all the kind of research, researchers are uh, doing this uh, flow, flow cytometry for their uh, better understanding okay so what they did okay what is the color first uh, we want to understand what is the color in the in this image okay uh, first we have a mixture of cell we are adding the antibody if there is a non target cell that is a uh, it's a it's unwanted cell means that is that explain as the black color if there is a target cell target cell, target cell means that cell want to have the this the cell want to have the antigen on the surface so is that the uh, target cell uh, interaction happen to antibody it's a it gives the color change that is the red color okay here uh, in this uh, in this uh, image they added the sample okay how uh, in this sample if there is the optical uh, laser recognizing the recognizing the uh, that molecule means it gives a signal to the detector so that we can understand how much amount of uh, uh, how much amount of uh, recombinant that uh, specific cell present over there in this step we can uh, collect the detect collect the uh, specific cells also that is sorting in this flow cytometry instruments uh, first they added the uh, group of sample in the path it allows only one cell alone okay if there is a needed cell they, they fixed the wavelength okay uh, for for example i mentioned if there is an uh, red signal for a uh, uh, target cell means okay detector recognizing the uh, signal or the color intensity that x director activating the shorting machine shorting machine means collecting that uh, here that here in this uh, bucket it's shown the waste material if there is a need uh, uh, the, if there is a need of need of target cell means it moves and place the uh, that uh, collecting uh, 
collecting tube that collecting tube collects the a specific cell that is a cell sorting here they mentioned as a, it's a, how we detect here is the laser beam formation here they pass the sample the sample is uh, uh, having uh, having various receptor on cell surface it's expressing as a uh, various signals to the detectors. These detectors are help uh, uh, transfer amplifying the signal into the digital con conversion. Conversion. This digital conversion uh, given as an input to the system. Here, uh, how the cells are uh, uh, cells are understood and recognized on the cell surface. Okay. In this uh, in this step, they having the a group of cells that a group of cells are having antigen a fluorescent dye on this cell surface right this uh, fluorescent dye on the cell surface this fluorescent dye is the recognized the recognition molecule if that is a fluorescence happen means okay that cell is we we, we want that cell otherwise you don't want this cell okay in this step detector recognizing the uh, that a fluorescence dye then fluor that's move to the move down in that step we have a positive and negativity negative charge on the cell surface if there is a fluorescent dye means it, it help it having it carries the power charge based on the charge interaction we can separate these cells here we can understand so cell surface having the negative charge so, uh, here they may uh, Placed the electromagnetic uh, rods. This electromagnetic rods are recognized. Recognized the anti uh, gen and that uh, recognized the targeted cell. The targeted cells are collected in the separate tube. It's an experimental value, experimental methods. First addition of the target cell. It's recognized by the detector. Then it's moved towards the end of the pipe. The, at the end of the pipe, it uh, separated based on their a uh, charge on the surface. It's a fluorescence, uh, immunofluorescence microscope. In this immunofluorescence, it's a very important, a very important and a simple concept. In this, we have the light source, excitation filter, dichroic uh, di mirror, this uh, then emission filter. Okay, these are the four important parts which help us to. Uh, uh, image for detect develop the image for immunofluorescence microscopy. In this image, it's not uh, it's a basic image because that uh, here the specimen placed over the stage. Uh, here one uh, in this uh, image, that objective is uh, observed. Uh, uh, it's a image. It's producing the signal. It's absorbing the light source, right? Yeah, they are producing the light source. This light source is uh, uh, this uh, deviated by the the dichroic mirror. This mirror helps to absorb the helps to pass the light on objective. This objective. Okay, this object is uh, receiving the receiving the light means it's producing it get it producing a fluorescence. Otherwise, it's not producing the uh, fluorescence. If there is a fluorescence, have fluorescence uh, emitted on the cell surface means that cell surface having the antibody. It's understanding based on the experiment. Here we have the it's a plot the cell surface the cell surface having the antibody with the uh, uh, that fluoro fluorescence molecule. Once you pass the light, it emit the light, emit the fluorescence. It's another better explanation. Here, you pass the light, white light on the specimen. The specimen surface having the antibody with the fluorescence molecule. So, it's passed the fluorescence to your visibility eye. And then another important technique is the FIS and GIS. FIS means the fluorescence in tissue hybridization. Uh, then another one is the genomic in tissue hybridization. Uh, here, in tissue hybridization means the modification, it's a modification, uh, modified technique. In tissue hybridization means 
inside of the in situ hybridization is located on the gene or dna which is lysed by the chromosome uh, the the chromophores that all fluorescence molecule due to the molecule we can detect fluorescent molecule deposit happen in the fluorescence uh, in tissue hybridization the another thing a genome genome hybridization used in the genome in tissue hybridization this is the one best example first explaining image first step they are having the uh, dna probe probe is labeled with the molecule this uh, indirectly added to the slide then here we are having the uh, non labeled dna here we have the labeled dna here we have the non labeled dna uh, then did the denaturation denaturation happen in the both uh, labeled and non labeled dna in this uh, denaturation uh, in tissue hybridization happens what is in tissue hybridization happens the non labeled dna is recombinated with the labeled dna here it's happened it's basic understandable okay after this recombination the uh, the produced dna can detect the anti uh, detect the uh, fluorescence that produced dna is having the ability of the interaction it's a one important step here another one is the unlabeled normal inter normal hybridization or normal uh, hybridization here we produced the uh, chromosome with the dna with the labeled molecule here we have the chromosome with the non labeled molecule it's visualized under the uh, slide under the microscope is that is uh, uh, it it help us to detect the uh, sample detect the sample how much amount of uh, hybridization happened or uh, uh, randomly cut down by the dna enzyme after that we added the uh, dntps this dntps are denatured this double strand is uh, denatured at 72 degrees celsius here another cell we have the fixed cell this cell having the dna this normal dna this normal dna is denatured this denatured normal dna and uh, denatured modified dna is uh, hybridized here this hybridization uh, this uh, modified DNA uh, that uh, have a DNTP is having the biotin label. labeled. This biotin label have hel help us to uh, understand, help us to recognize the antibody, specific antibody that, that is the DIC, Avidin, uh, biotin, Avidin, uh, they both are the help us to uh, exp explain the fluorescence in the hybridization. Here, that uh, this ENTPs are labeled with the biotin. This biotin labels are uh, are uh, and uh, are uh, recognizing the avidin linked uh, fluorophores. Here, this yellow color is a fluorophore. Is this avidin? This biotin avidin interaction makes the fluorescence. Uh, uh, if there is the biotin avidin interaction happen, means that fluorescence get activated. Fluoro it produces the fluorescence. Otherwise, it not producing the fluorescence. The main focus is understanding of the recombinant and understanding of the uh, modified uh, understanding of the produced fixed cell. Here it's an uh, detector uh, experiment. Here this is called as the uh, basic fixed cell experiment. Here it's a normal cell having the D DNA that chromosome that's uh, denatured uh, denatured uh, at 42 degrees Celsius. Another thing, uh, on other side, we have a gene. That gene is uh, modified with the biotin label. This biotin labeled uh, DNTPs are um, undergone denaturation. This, the, after this upper strand is overlapped with this uh, uh, down strand, that's lower strand. These two strands are uh, form, uh, forming the double strand that, uh, that uh, 
pre prime stand off uh, the modified gene and five prime stand off the normal cell is incorporated and producing the fluorescence uh, producing the signal for attraction of the avidin this antibody and antibody and the antigen interaction producing the uh, fluorescence that producing the fluorescence under the microscope uh, here this is the genome uh, uh, hybridization first first image itself i mentioned uh, the one probe dna it interact directly uh label and indirectly labeled here this is a directly labeled directly fluorescent molecules are attached here uh, we are added the antibodies for the fluorescence the denaturation happens this denaturation denatured two strands are incorporated with the uh, block that's uh, normal dna this normal dna chromosome is uh, uh, formed and this formed dna's are having the uh directly labeled uh, molecule and indirectly labeled molecule in the structure we can see the probe with the uh, the signal denatured signal that uh, directly labeled signal and the indirectly labeled signal on the surface this is the incorporation this is the hybridization that's making the hybrid hybrid of chromosome level then we are entered into the biophysics concept this bio biophysics concept uh, we having the nmr microscopy ir spectroscopy uv visible spectroscopy why we want to this different value based on the uh, the, the the spectrum electromagnetic spectrum range we want to vary the spectroscopic method if there is small the the molecule is visible it is uh, it can be absorbed by uv light means we want to use the you will visible otherwise it won't it is that it that having the specific ir radiation ir wavelength means we want to understand the image that structure with the ir spectroscopy that is fdr spectroscopy method another one is the nmr spectroscopy it's a radio radio waves based on the radio waves we can understand the nmr spectroscopy what is the uh, in uh, the information obtained from the nmr The specific arrangement of carbon, all carbon and hydrogen atoms in the compound. We can understand the arrangement of uh, carbon and hydrogen atoms on the compound. Another one is the functional group present here. I R spectroscopy. This F T R spectroscopy is fully depends on the functional group present on the cell surface. Uh, please understand. uh here uh, uh, we, this is a very very important topic that they rapidly ask the question in the csr exams only i mentioned this the nmr spectroscopy is activated we are we are uh, that uh, uh principle is based on the radio waves this helps to understand the arrangement of all carbon and hydrogen atoms in the ir spectroscopy that is ftr spectroscopy that uh, the ir spectroscopy is help us to uh find out the functional groups of the happen in the compound the compound normal basic compound interactions can identified by the uv visible spectroscopy okay uh, it's a principle of the uv spectroscopy okay uh, we have uh, 30 more slides shall we go ahead or uh, continue with uh, tomorrow or shall we continue in tomorrow class uh, uh, because uh, uh, i want to oh, clarify with you please tell uh, whether we want to confirm or uh, shall we go that uh, with uh, tomorrow class i have 30 more slides because uh, it's a vast topic we have two topics bio physics and radio labeling participants please let me know shall we continue or uh,
Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your response. Okay, uh, it's a UV visible spectrometer. In this UV, uh, you, we have a two two, di two types, and will be in the in this uh, latest period, many of them are uh, uh, all of them are used the this double beam. Uh, Double beam spectrophotometer. Okay, in this double beam spectrophotometer, we having the uh, setup with here uh, the light source are passed in this light light source are a, a D two lamp and we have a D two lamp and the tungsten lamp. That is the we uh, UTM lamp is called as the D uh, two lamp. This D two lamp is help us to detect the molecules or detect the some molecules under the wavelength 400 nanometer and that kind of uh, it, we, we can change the light for visible and uv this light source is maybe the d2 d2 means you observe the uv uv compounds it's a below below 400 below 400 it is uv wave below 400 nanometer is a uv wavelength this uv uh, wavelength recognized by the D2 lamp, D2 lamp. It's a very important thing. Uh, it's a, uh, there is a basic thing. They are asked the question with the critical uh, concept. But the one thing is UV visible, UV nanometer below 400, 200 to 400 is a UV wavelength. This uh, 200 nanometer to 400 nanometer uh, range is reg uh, absorbed and recognized by the D2 lamp. Another one is the above 400 to 700, the 900, 700, that's 700, 700 is the major maximum fix. 400 to, 900, uh, 400 to 700 nanometer is absorbed by the tungsten lamp. This tungsten lamp is a it uh, helps to uh, recognize the visible uh, range molecule. It's a two important thing uh, we want to understand in the spectrophotometer. Okay, they are provided this question like uh, this compound having the uh, 400 nanometer absorbance. 400, and absor 400 nanometer absorbance means uh, what? what is the light? It, it helps to recognize the um, that compound in the spectrophotometer. In the for that kind of question, uh, we want to understand this basic concept. If that molecule having the 400 nanometer recognized absorption means it can be uh, understood, it can be uh, captured by the uh, tungsten lamp. If they are provided that compound having the uh, 250 nanometer absorbance means that able to detect under the deuterium lamp. And 200 to 400 is a UV range. For UV range, we want to use the tungsten. Uh, I mean, sorry, deuterium, uh, deuterium D2 lamp, D2 lamp. 400 to 700 is a visible range. For that visible range compounds, we want to use the tungsten lamp. 200 to 400, we want to use the deuterium lamp D2. Uh, 200 to 400, it's a visible UV range. 200 to 400 is a visible range. We want to use the deuterium lamp. 400 to 700 is the visible range. We want to use the tungsten lamp. Another thing is the uh, here uh, after that uh, absorbance that molecule uh, that uh, here it's uh, this mirror. Uh, it's uh, reflect the image reflect the light the diffractant grading. After the uh, after that that light pass through the filter to mirror to this mirror to reflect the image to a mirror four this mirror four and um, transfer the image to uh, the lights to the detector two okay next is the uh, it's an, uh, another basic example of the Fluorescence, uh, uh, fluorescence spectroscopy, fluorescence uh, uh, microscopical image. In this fluorescence microscopical image, uh, here there is a sample state. So we can, we place the sample over there. Uh, it's a light. Light is passed through the uh, this uh, particular uh, portion, 
this uh, after the light uh, absorbance on the cells uh, cell subjective that objective producing the fluorescence uh, light that fluorescence light at uh, absorbed by the spectral photometer and this spectral photometer it emit the uh, transfer the signals to the monitor it's a di a circular di dichromism spectro scopy it's a very very important thing first is the spectrophotometer the spectrophotometer helps to detect the uh, visible and uh, uv mo uv absorbance molecule then is a fluorescence spectroscopy fluorescence spectroscopy it's uh, another uh, uh, technique which helps to develop the uh, cells de develop the images with the fluorescence absorbance another thing is a circular di di dichrosum uh, CD spectroscopy. Spectroscopy. This CD spectroscopy is an absorption. Absorption spectroscopy. CD spectroscopy is an absorption spectroscopy. Uh, it having the uh, uh, different parts. It having it's a light source. This light source pass the uh, 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 through the filter wheels. This filter wheels uh, absorb uh, uh, filter the light and pass to the uh, that keyword that keyword having the sample that uh, that is helps to understand the protein structure the, all that all the things that happen with the wavelength understanding here um, uh, wavelength psi psi wavelength you you are all studied these are all the sine sine wave sine waves using this sine waves uh, we can uh, um, do the experiments okay this is a principle of the dichrome uh, di uh, circular uh, dichroism okay 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 uh, yeah okay Fine. I'm just finish. I'm uh, just finishing this uh, uh, radio uh, red, uh, spectroscopy topic alone. That fire physics topic alone. Uh, tomorrow I will continue. Uh, here, uh, why I mentioned this means based on the absorption, we are get the wavelength for peak peak for the wavelength. The peak wavelengths are uh, converted to dichroism. Here, that is the concept. The it's a, a very 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 simple technique which uh, understand the uh, molecules the photon using the photon beams we can understand the molecules. Here they mentioned the complicated protein. So that based on uh, based on the protein uh, absor uh, absorbance we get the that modified sequence it is simple it's very simple so based on the image based on the structure we can understand the uh, component here the left polarized light is passed uh, to and light, right polarized light here uh, the between the signals absorbed by the two lights here they mentioned here uh, different lights are passed right Based on the light intensity, we are observed the signals. Difference between the signals are helps to understand the structure. Then another one is the NMR concept. This NMR concept is a very, very important thing. It's also absorption of electromagnetic radiations between from the 4 MHz to 9,900 MHz. Uh, it's a uh, quoted one. Uh, NMR microscopy is a uh, spectroscopy is a uh, absorption electromagnetic radiation based techniques. In this technique, we having the uh, it can the, the absorb the radiation between the four megahertz to nine nine hundred megahertz. This radiation absorbed by the nucleus or nuclei of the compound. It may be the cell. It, it may be the compound. Every compound having the nuclei, right? That nuclei. Uh, at the nuclear level, we can understand. So only they mentioned that helps to understand the atoms of the carbons and hydrogens. Two types of waves are used in the uh, NMR. That is the continuous waves and pulse waves. So setup, sampling tube is there. 
where uh, yeah, that the magnetic uh, electromagnetic uh, waves are passed to the sample that uh, that electromagnetic waves helps to uh, detect the uh, detect by the detector that producing the signals to printer that based on the uh, electromagnetic uh, electromagnetic signal on the atom we will uh, develop the signal uh, it's an uh, another nmr technique to understand the protein structure here that this uh, that nmr sample protein sample is loaded in the tube this sample is uh, transferred into the spectrophotometer that is the nmr spectrophotometer uh, that setup detects uh, produce the signals like uh, this kind of uh, 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 this uh, this kind of peaks that uh, these peaks are undergone the data acquisition that are, that are data acquisition means it's converted into the signals signals mean these signals are helps to produce the uh, process, produce the uh, image uh, protein structure here these peaks are the atom peaks okay see having the height this much height uh, position of the atom. This uh, peak is helps to understand position of the carbon atom and hydrogen atom, and uh, it helps to uh, under produce the data acquisition. This after the acquisition uh, obtaining, we develop the image for the protein structure. Then electron electron spinning resonance spectroscopy. The electron spinning resonance spectroscopy. It's uh, a uh, very important thing is based on the electron uh, electron transfer we are doing this experiment it helps to understand the transient metal complex uh, previously we discussed the protein it helps to uh, nmr helps to uh, the compound and the protein spectroscopy also helps to understand the uh, this uh, dichromism helps to understand the protein structure then uh, this uh, spectroscopy helps to understand the compounds. We can uh, we can uh, measure the protein also, but we can't find the structure. Fluorescence it uh, depends on the antigen antibody interaction and the fluorescence molecule present on the structure. We can develop. Dichromism helps to understand the uh, proteins molecules. And then NMR helps to understand the, at the nuclear level. It may be the protein, it may be the compound. Here, the spectroscopic method is helps to ion metal, compl metal complex. Jo uh, it's, uh, it helps to understand the uh, geometrics in the crystals. Uh, here, there is uh, uh, spectro uh, absorption spectrum of uh, um, the compound. It's a... a Radio, uh, the electron spinning microscopic uh, spectrum is look like this. Uh, here we can uh, measure the uh, different uh, ion complex. We can uh, we can uh, find the inorganic compounds. All the things will happen in the uh, electron spinning microscopy. In the biological application, they are used for the detection of the sulfur, copper, free radicals. Uh, these are the four different uh, uh, my optical optical spectroscopy comparison. If there is absorption microscopy, it absorbs our ratio of transmitted incident radio radiant power. It's a uh, measured measured quantity. It's absorbance or the ratio of the transmitted absorbance or the ratio of the transmitted. It's the output. It's an example is the UV IR radiation spectroscopy. At atomic absorption microscopy emission based uh, technique means the radio power of the emission this radio power of uh, power of the emission is uh, uh, understand the that uh, icp the in, uh, induction coupled plasma uh, plasma microscopy another thing is the uh, dichromism dichromism are the emissions based experiment Luminescence uh, experiment ratio ratio power of the luminescence. This is the molecular fluorescence molecule using the using the mole, molecular fluorescence and the fluor uh, we can understand. Yeah. Yeah. Scattering uh, using the Raman scattering we can uh, do the um, Raman spectroscopic experiment. Uh, this is the 
different uh, X-ray crystallographic method, electron microscopic method. This electron X-ray molecules are recognized by the uh, that uh, X-ray crystallographic techniques, the electron microscopy, then electron probe to the uh, uh, that uh, focusing mirror that in the mismatch one. It's the uh, first thing uh, of I'm in this step I mentioned. Oh, sorry, I missed. These are the techniques helps to understand the protein structure. X-ray crystallography and NMR crystallography. So only I'm secondly repeating this NMR uh, sample preparation, sequential assignment, side chain assignment, and then collection of the NMR restraints, NMR sample structure collection, and structure validation. Uh, this is the first you want to understand the atom level, then um, acid, amino acid level, then structure. That second is structure loops, hydrophilic, hydro. I'm um, sorry, uh, region, hydrophilic region, hydrophobic region, that kind of understanding. Then only final structure is developed. Uh, it's a uh, scattering light microscopy, is Raman microscopy. Okay, this uh, Raman microscopy is, uh, oh, okay. Uh, this scattering light microscopy is a uh, uh, basic thing, having the Raman scatter light. Relay scatter scatter light and then normal lateral uh, scatter light with the uh, e, this uh, emission values. How why I mentioned this uh, this image means scattering microscopy is a very very sp sc scattering uh, light microscopy is uh, op uh, are working with the this light uh, uh, scattering of the molecule and the its effect is helps to Raman. Uh, Raman spectroscopy. This Raman spectroscopy, they are passing the laser light to the molecule. These molecules are vibrated based on the vibration that producing the layer, layer, uh, ray light scattering that uh, scattered images uh, under observed by the diffraction grating. There is no uh, light based on the vibration alone, the detector is recognizing the signal. Okay. This is the uh, another uh, the another image. Here the light is passed to the molecule. That molecule give the some shame, shaking on the particular uh, screen. That sh shaking is uh, recognized by the uh, here uh, this uh, um, photo photo diagram. So only that is a molecule. That molecules are having the shaking that moving that I explained with the. Uh, larger particles. Then DLS, that uh, this DLS is a particle size analyzer. analyzer. Uh, this uh, dissolved, um, this helps to understand the uh, particle size, particle movement, it's everything happen. Because in the DLS instrument, we having the cuvette like the instrument. In the uh, cuvette, we place a sample with the solution. Uh, in the solution that uh, Brownian motion using based on the Brownian motion of the molecule, it developed the image uh, that developed the uh, okay, this density, this much amount of particles are there here. It's a detector, it's a cuvette, which uh, we pass the uh, laser to the, the, this cuvette. In this cuvette, uh, we uh, that's the particles, right? That particles are passing the signals. And it helps to produce this theta potential. It's based on the theta potential value. We, we can tell the particle size. Using the DNL, DLS, uh, DLS, we can understand the... Um, uh, we can understand the theta potential and particle size. It's an ionization process. In this ionization process, it absorbs the light. Uh, uh, it's also, uh, ion, ionic uh, deuterium lamp is on uh, on passed through the sample. That samples are uh, based on the uh, based on the, uh, the uh, that both side interaction that are aligned in the line. That aligned molecules are separated by the uh, this particular uh, screen. That uh, separated molecules are linearly passed through the. Uh, detector linear uh, the electron multiplier that uh, multiplier helps to uh, develop the uh, uh, and it it uh, multipliers are helps to form the uh, reflected uh, mode of the molecules that absorbed at the absorbed at the reflect 
reflect on mode. This is a portion of the DLS. Here, that is the detection part. Detection part. In this detection part, we having the um, we are having the primary ions and a secondary ions. In this primary ion, secondary ion absorption, that energy is uh, varying because primary ions are passed on the sample that produce some energy ions. That the ions are or uh, uh, quantitatively analyzed at the energy analyzer. This energy analyzer, it's uh, uh, passed the signal to mass spectrophotometer. This mass spectrophotometer is attached to the detector. This based on the signals. Here we having three type of signals. That is the uh, mass spectrometric peak. This peak value compared with the standard and detect the mass, ma mass of the particular compound. It's a setup value, setup of the compound. Uh, here we inject the sample. In this portion, we can inject the sample. The electron source is there. Uh, this electron beam is passed on the uh, uh, sample. The particles are oscillated into the magnetic field. Here, this is the magnetic field. After this uh, magnetic field entry, it's charged with the particle beams. Okay, then magnetic field is separated. This uh, using this magnetic field, this image itself they mention. You see, after reaching this uh, this magnetic field, this molecule gets separated. Separated. The separated molecules are uh, this um, uh, move based on the weight, higher molecular weight and lower molecular weight. If that is a light molecular weight, it's more past. Uh, it's uh, it's. Um, absorbed by one area that enter into the another other particular portion of the detector. If there is a high molecular weight, it's uh, move slowly and uh, reach the uh, reach the detector at the particular temperature. It's a Maldi-Toff analysis. Maldi-Toff analysis help us to detect the protein structure. Maldi-Toff. Every protein structure can be detected by the Maldi-Toff. Here we having the disruption. This disruption uh, means the laser beams are attached on the protein. Here, there is a protein. After the resolution of ionization process, that uh, molecules are detached and that particular protein alone detected. The Maldi-Toff technique is a very important technique. The protein, if you purify the protein, it can be detected by the laser beam that uh, uh, it's a uh, detector based on the molded of structure and uh, your your collected samples are detected and shaped and uh, uh, structure of the compound is detected based on the molded of analysis. Here the photon transfer happens in the after the during the ionization process and this ionization process we can explain the total mass analysis. Then uh, next is the LCMS. The same principle of the TCMS happen in the LCMS process because but one another thing is uh, here they use the liquid. That uh, different thing is the uh, LCMS process is that uh, they use the liquid as a molecule. Then uh, another is the uh, surface sensitive uh, uh, surface reson surface plasma uh, plasma uh, resonance uh, spectroscopy. In this method, it helps to detect the uh, surface tens sensitivity of the protein. So we can understand the protein-protein interaction. We can develop protein-ligand interaction. We can understand the protein uh, DNA interaction, protein membrane interaction. We can the protein related of all studies, the surface related to all studies, because cell surface having the n number of protein. This surface uh, protein related uh, topics are covered that are identified by the that surface uh, resonance, uh, plasma resonance spectroscopy. The light energy is interact with the uh, delocalized the electron, that is the surface electron in the metal surface that reduce the reflector light intensity. Once the light is absorbed on the cell surface means that the intensity will automatically reduce. It helps us to understand the uh, that light intensity variation. It helps us to understand the surface modification. Here, the light source are uh, passed on the uh, cell surface. The, the samples flow on the cell surface. 
uh, if there is uh, the interaction happens means that absorb the light that producing the less signal there is no uh, no interaction happen in this particular portion so there is less intensity uh, the less light alone absorbed on the surface so light intensity output is high here uh, that uh, blue color that uh, yellow color means that is the less intensity that uh, Oh, that yellow color means that is the light passing. The, the light, uh, imagine this yellow color means that light rays. Okay, here you pass the light. There is no interaction, uh, no molecule is there. So that light directly emitted, that is directly absorbed by the uh, detector unit. If there is an interaction means that is uh, light is absorbed by the interaction. That is the high density molecule. Uh, we can't uh, receiving the light. This is a sensor based technique uh, using uh, using this uh, surface resonance uh, sur uh, surface plasma resonance we can using the sensor develop the sensors it's a it's a cold chip this cold chip is uh, uh, coated with the uh, peptides these peptides are specific for the antibodies this antibody, the immuno immunological antibody, this technique is alone used for this uh, laser kit, this uh, uh, coronavirus detection kit. So only I have included this image for the surface resonance uh, spectroscopic method. This uh, this basic method, they are using the kit. Here they are using the uh, spectroscopic method. Uh, they are main, they are um, they are uh, detected based on the uh, image uh, that color change alone. This uh, in this step uh, step itself, the color change happen. After the antibody binding, antigen antibody binding, there was a color change happen on the golden uh, base, that kit. After that, we can quantify using the detector, the surface plasma resonance molecule. Okay, then this radioactive te radioactive labeling technique. First, we want to understand the properties of radioisotopes. Why we want to use the radioisotopes? This radioactivity, uh, radioisotopes are helps to detect the. Uh, it can kill the cell. It can mutate the cell. It can be uh, uh, have it having different properties. It uh, because that radioactive labels are very very sensitive. We want to uh, that it may be cause the cancer. So if you are working with radioactive isotopes, means we want to be careful. The same chemical properties as non-radioactive isotopes, the same elements, every properties are same, but the uh, sensitive, that uh, uh, toxicity is higher than the normal isotopes. Okay, decrease with the time. The radioactive, uh, the uh, reduction time is very less. Here they mentioned uh, four ty three types of the particles, alpha particles, beta particles, the gamma particles. This uh, each particles is that uh, two protons and two neutrons have that is called as the alpha particle. Uh, These particles are the electrons, beta particles are the electrons uh, that uh, gamma rays are the electromagnetic waves that's similar to the X-rays. First one is uh, that alpha particles are similar to the identical to a nucleus of the helium-4. Why I have mentioned this means used on, based on this, we can develop the experiment. Okay, if you want to uh, you want to the, do the experiment related detection method using the helium means you can develop the alpha particle. You can take the alpha particle. Uh, if you want to relate the X-ray X -ray related molecule, means you want to detect the X-ray X -ray related experiment, you want to do the X-ray uh, alternative to the X-ray molecule means X-ray experiment, we want to select, select the gamma rays experiment, uh, gamma rays particle. Why as only I am uh, mentioned, this alpha particles are not very, uh, not able to penetrating. This beta is uh, moderately penetrating to the uh, things, but gamma rays are very penetrating. So only they are using this uh, replacement of the X-ray or X-ray. X-ray is penetrated to the bones, so only they are using the X-ray. So likewise, it's having the highly penetrating property. Here, I'm going to explain the uh, just, just two minutes, I'm going to finish up. Sorry for the, uh, I'm taking too much of time today. Uh, Sunday, I am, uh, uh, I'm not expecting this much uh, uh, time uh, happen, uh, taken for this session. 
sorry for the uh, uh, sorry for this delay uh, just to uh, two minutes i am going to end up this uh, carbon 14 it help us to the research process in this research purpose we can uh, develop the uh, we can uh, determine the steps involved in the photosynthesis if we are doing the research on the plant photosynthesis we are we can use this carbon 14 radioisotope this phosphorus 32 and 33 is used to the genetic level Cilium 75 is the protein studies in the life science. The strontium, strontium, strontium is helps to metabolism and the bone formation. Hydrogen 3 and or tritium is used to the life science studies of the drug metabolisms. Then uh, cobalt 16, radiotherapy. Uh, the radiotherapy and prevent cancer. Uh, this is the one important thing. Every hospital is having these cobalt isotopes. They are following the safety levels. Then iodine, the 131, the local brain tumor. We can treat this with the local brain tumor. It's a very, very high expensive one. Uh, for uh, um, some time period, they are asking the 5 lakh or 7 lakh some amount. Uh, the carbon-14 in, uh, uh, in the medicine field, they are the anemia patients are used. Carbon-11 is uh, PET is used in the PET is can sodium 24 is a blood circulation studies uh, thallium is 201 is helps to use the heart tissues may determine the heart tissue cam yeah it's a, a auto oh no angio angio test in the heart attack patient they did the angio test that the detector is a, the detector having the uh, this uh, thallium 201 uh, compound then uh, in the industrial level, uh, they use the uh, americium 241. It helps to um, find uh, the uniform thickness uh, when uh, rolling the paper or steel. Determine the location of the oil well. It's a very, very important thing. That determine, the, uh, determine the location of the oil well is uh, uh, we can determine using the americium 241. The sodium 24 is help us to the uh, detect the uh, location uh, leakage of the pipelines leakage of, leakage of the pipelines are detected using the sodium 24 then uh, tritium is helps to aircraft part develop the aircraft the boilers and the uh, integrity of the boilers and aircraft parts uh, uranium uh, it's a nuclear power plant you all know california california is direct the moisture content of the soil the, the, the americium is a very very important and the sodium 24 is a very important thing this are all I mentioned that repeatedly I mentioned uh, uh, the, that uh, compound. Here they, I mentioned the half-life. Half-life based question is a very, very important. Uh, the carbon is a high half-life, uh, carbon-14 having the higher half-life. That is the 5,730 years. 5,730 years. Uh, and the technetium is uh, having the 6 hours. Uh, that having the many applications. Uh, here, a uh, molecular imaging process. They are in each and every, the isotopes also used for the molecular imaging. That is the uh, uh, PET instrument. That PET instrument means the positron emission tomography. The positron emission tomography. It's an MR, uh, the uh, MRI scan. That kind of scanning, scanning M CT scan. CT scan is combined with the uh, Procitron emission top tomography. Uh, this using the uh, rays. Uh, we previously mentioned, right? Uh, alpha ray, alpha rays, alpha beta gamma rays. Based on the penetration, they uh, they are uh, differentiated. That beta and the gamma is penetratable. That gamma is very penetratable. Here they are using the gamma uh, radiations, the isotopes. It helps us to. Uh, uh, understanding the image of the organs okay diagnosis of cancer if, if there is a one part having the cancer in the human body just pass the rays means you can develop we can understand the size of the cancer uh, we can understand the block of happened in the card cardiac okay there was a big big hole big uh, uh, accumulation happened in the cardiac that kind of things image imagine images are are recognized by the PET, the positron, positron uh, emission topography. Tomography. 
it's a basic principle uh, how it's uh, activated uh, thank you so much and sorry uh, today section i'm going to finish up with uh, uh, biophysics uh, techniques radio isotope technique and uh, the immunological techniques we have finished the almost uh, the uh, the main techniques to, uh, we are finished in the molecular methods in biology tomorrow we dis we are we will discuss the uh, statistical method microscopical technique and electrophysiological method field in the biology thank you so much everyone uh, if you have any questions please post it and i am not uh, uh, tell it in uh, this uh, session i will post uh, uh, usually uh, i will post in the um, your uh, google classroom and mail hey, ladies if you have any questions please post in a chat box i will uh, if you have any questions in the uh, session just uh, post it in the command line i will explain the answer in the google classroom and mail ids thank you everyone